is joined now by the one, the only, Damian Lillard. Uh, Dame, thanks so much for the time. I know that on off nights, uh, you know, it's valuable time for you, and you get pulled a lot of different directions. So thanks for joining us. Uh, it's all good. Thanks for having me. Talk about, you know, in the first segment, Dame, we talked about 25-7 and seven this year, 25-7 and seven last year, but the, the the ways you have done it has been, you know, the way you've gotten here is so different than last year. The fact that, you know, everybody knows last year's so healthy, no issues, same starting lineup through 53 games. This year, eight different starting lineups, um, and you've had some guys banged up. You've had to find different ways to win. Has that been maybe more valuable, and do you appreciate the 25-7 and seven maybe a little more this year? Yeah, I think we appreciated it a lot more this year because we've done it with some adversity. Um, obviously, losing Rolo uh, is a huge part of our team, uh, protecting the paint, um, uh, finishing in the paint on pick and rolls at a high level, and just his presence um, is, is big for our team. And not having him, is, it hurts our team. Um, and with L.A. being sick and Nico having to miss a few games, uh, even Chris came in missing a game or two. Um, you know, it's tough, but I think because of the the guys that have come off the bench and been ready to play and come in and contribute, uh, you know, it's made us a better team. And because of the things we've had to do to get to this point, uh, you know, it's been, it's been a great run. How much better, speaking of past years, how much better are you right now than you were when you first came in the NBA and uh, the first year, year and a half. Uh, what have you improved upon? Um, I think I'm a lot better. Uh, just half of it is probably because of just the experience. Uh, coming in, playing the league and starting and playing a lot of minutes and getting comfortable uh, had a lot to do with my growth. I think that's a big part of growing in this league is just getting the experience and getting the time on the floor. Um, but I also put in the time. I mean, a lot of the, a lot of times you go home over the summer and people ask, you know, what are you going to add to your game? What are you going to get better at? And I've always got better at my strengths. Like, the ball is probably my main strength. And every summer I go home and I try to get better at that. I just try to make everything that I do well uh, more of an elite skill, handling the ball better, um, become a better passer watching film just to see some of the things I can improve on in the game. And um, I think this year I've just become a more efficient player because of that. You know, just getting better at my strengths. Now, uh, um, getting better, getting better at, I wasn't, <laughs> you know, I was going to say getting better at my strengths and then the, the things that I'm not great at, just taking it as a challenge and getting better at it. Do you recommend everybody? Uh, you know, I, I see some guys that in the NBA, strength is so important in the NBA. Do you study other guards like Laurie uh, that you're going to play against tomorrow? And do you see, you know, I can muscle this guy or this guy's going to try to muscle me? How important is strength in the NBA? Oh, strength is huge. Uh, not only as far as, you know, using it against another player is you know, just as far as hold, your body holding up, you know, we playing against the greatest athletes in the world night in and night out for 82 games plus playoffs. So, you know, if your body isn't strong enough to hold up, you won't be effective for the, the entire season. And it could also determine how effective you are, you know, in these games. So um, just building your body up and, you know, making sure that you're strong enough to take on the 82-game season and be effective in the 82-game season is big. Dame, you know, that's the physical side of things. The, the the psychological side of it, you know, is that it relates to having confidence in situations. I mean, that's been the fact that, you know, you're known as one of the most best guys in clutch situations in the NBA. Is that something you prepared for throughout your life? I mean, you know, we saw on the last road trip, obviously, the San Antonio game. You were fantastic. The big shot against OKC, the game six shot against Houston. You know, and, and, and after that shot against Oklahoma City, there were a lot of different, uh, you know, social media and whatnot showing all of your game-tying, game-winning shots late. What is it about your mentality that maybe in those situations where other guys maybe fear the moment, you expect – not only success, but greatness in those moments. What, what, what's gotten you to that point? Um, I think the biggest thing is just not being afraid to fail at that time. Uh, you know, it's time to take that shot or, you know, anytime that situation comes up, I want to, I'm willing to be the guy that, you know, either makes it or breaks it for my team. 
know, I, I know that I can carry that weight. Um, you know, if I make it, I know I can handle the the positive part of it. Of you know, people call me a clutch player or a closer or whatever. I know I can handle that, and not start to think that it's you know this big deal or I'm this big deal because I do this and I can handle missing it. You know, if I don't happen to make it, I can handle people saying, "Oh, he missed the biggest shot," and this, you know, and things like that. I know that I can handle both sides. Um, you know, and I I don't mind taking that pressure off if off of, you know, somebody else happened to be in that position. You know, regardless if they're comfortable or not, I don't mind being a guy that steps up in those situations. And it's, it's also one of my favorite times of the game when everything is on the line. Now, uh, I giggled almost the whole night after your Lillard time. Uh, <laughs> are we, we going to see more of Lillard time in this season? Um, I ain't going to wear it out. <laughs> that was kind of... That was kind of how I was feeling at the time. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's definitely, if it's, if it's worthy of coming out, it'll come out. <laughs> 16 threes <laughs> last night, 16 made threes. You guys became the first team in NBA history to make, you know, 16 or more threes, three straight games. And, and I thought one of the one of the plays last night that typified the attitude on this Blazers team was when Matthews got off to the hot start, and we all know how hot Wesley has been, and it was early in the game when he'd been hot. You guys swing the ball. I think it was a Darrell right to the middle that kicks the ball out, and Wesley gets it, and instead of taking the three, and he's wide open, he makes the extra pass to you, and you hit the three, and that kind of shows the unselfishness and the chemistry that you guys have together when you have it going from behind the three-point line. Yeah, I mean, that's just that's the type of team that we have uh... – you know, Wes obviously had it going last night, and um, he could have easily took another one and probably made another one right then and there. But he he noticed that I had probably had only shot the ball one time, uh, and he made the extra pass to get me a look at the, at the rim. And um, I think that's a perfect example of why we've been successful this season. You know, because that's that's our team's mentality. The fact that he was aware of that and he was willing to give himself up for me. So. I mean, that's just the type of team that we, we've been. You know, uh, at his post-game interview, Wes mentioned uh, they, Michael Holden said, uh, now you attempted 15 threes. And he said, what? <laughs> I attempted 15? He, he was really dumbfounded that he had taken that many. And I think that's the way you, all of you guys look at it. You know, you're going to share the load. Speaking of yeah, the load, I mean, the, this team tomorrow night, Toronto. Do you look at it as a challenge game? They're nine and two against the West. They have the best record of an Eastern team against the West. Do you look at this as a real challenge for the Blazers? I mean, we have to. You know, they're 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 a real deal team. You know, they've won some big games. Uh, they play really well, and uh, you know, they're they're a really capable team. They. Got a lot of guys that came back better. Um, they they improved a lot of the team from last season, and um, you know they got some guys that that are capable of taking over a game. So, you know we we we're not a team that can go out there and just think somebody isn't good enough or somebody can't beat us. So uh, we got to have the same mindset to go out there and, and go win the game and do all the things that that are necessary to make that happen instead of looking at them like an Eastern Conference team or you know we're the home team. We got to go out there and do what we got to do. Dame, last thing, uh, Jason Quick's going to be on in a while on the show. And, you know, he wrote a nice piece about about you and a chance that, uh, you know, the NBA life affords you a lot of things. Being a star athlete affords you a lot of things. Of course, you have grabbed this and earned this. Um, the fact that you got to help your grandmother uh, down in Brookfield Village and, and, and really help her – rebuild a house I, I guess or build it from scratch and the fact that uh, uh, you you've gotten this opportunity now and and you know and and I love how I'm hearing how you are humble still about how you're viewed in your community and even by your family but but tell quickly the story of that and and the fact that grandma Cecilia now is going to get a new new uh, home because of you and what that means to you to be able to do that and give back to somebody so important to you I mean was as the financial part of, of being a professional athlete, that's that's the greatest part of for me is being able to provide for my family and, and people who need, who've always needed someone that they could depend on it, you know, if they ever need it. And um, you know, that was just another one of those situations where I I was getting ready to come back to Portland at the end of the summer and I walked in her house to 
to say goodbye. And I walked in, and the, the living room floor was kind of slanted a little bit. The foundation of the house was messed up, and it was causing the ceiling to crack a little bit. And I saw the crack in the ceiling, and she asked me, could I, could I help her get it fixed? And I said, yeah, what, what you need? And then she told me how much it cost it. And she like she's always been the, the backbone of the family. So the fact that she asked me that was, you know, was her putting her pride to the side. And when she said it, you know, she broke down and started crying. And I didn't want her to feel like she couldn't ask me for it. So um, I just decided to just do it all. You know, no, no, I'm just doing that one thing and something else becoming an issue. So I just decided to build it off from scratch. Dame, uh, thanks for the time once again. I want to let you go. I know it's an off night for you, and I appreciate you taking some time for us. And uh, we love being around you. Trailblazer fans love you, as you know, and uh, hope you have a long, long future in in, uh, in Portland, as Blazer fans certainly hoping as well. And uh, here's to a great December, and hopefully it continues with a couple of more wins before the month wraps up. And, thanks. and some more Lillard time. And some more Lillard time. Yeah. <laughs> right like that (laughs) (laughs) dame thanks we appreciate it we'll see you tomorrow all right all right damian lillard our guest here on the trailblazers courtside